What's up, everybody? Uh, it's been about a minute since I did my last video, and so I figured, why not? Let's let's get another one out there. I've been trying to do at least one video a week, and it's fair to say I haven't been on top of it. But anyways, I want to bring you a really obscure camera hack, but let's go ahead and roll that intro, and then we'll get right into it. So a while back, I made a video and it was all about uh, macro photography. I told you that if you took off your lens, turned it around, you can use it as a macro lens. Uh, today, I want to talk about macro photography once again, just because I think it's really cool. It's extremely interesting to me. I don't do a lot of it, but I'd like to start because I really do enjoy it. I just, I, I just don't. I'm too busy with other things, I guess. But anyways, uh, it's a very obscure camera hack that I've discovered. It's utilizing the concept of turning a lens backwards, but I decided to take it to another level. Um, I need a lens, another lens, and a little adapter. And, and, and I'll, I'll explain to you why in a second. Now, the adapter that I'm using is one of the little Vivitar uh, attachments that came with my camera. This one is my teleconverter with a macro. So I'm gonna take off the top of it because I don't need this part. All I need is the macro part. And the reason why I'm doing this is super cool and this is super dusty, so give me a second, I'm gonna clean this guy off. All right, that's all clean now. And so the reason why we need the adapter is because it's threaded on both sides of it. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and take off that lens and we're gonna put on the adapter. All right, now that that's on there, I'm going to take my other lens. And keep in mind the threading for your lenses both need to be the exact same. And these are both 58 millimeters. And now you have a beast of a lens. Uh, probably should have started from the beginning with what I'm using for this. Now, what I have is an 18 to 55. This is the kit lens that came with the camera. And for my father-in-law, I am borrowing his 100 to 300 millimeter. Just for that extra zoom, because why wouldn't I? We go ahead and put the cap on the back of the kit lens. And I'm gonna attach the zoom lens onto the camera, just because the zoom lens is by far the heavier of the two lenses. So when I'm holding the camera and the lens, I want to have the lighter one on here because I don't want to mess up the threads. I don't want to break the lenses, especially this one, because it's not mine. Um, I always take better care of stuff that's borrowed. But what do you say we go ahead and go outside? Because macro photography tends to need light and I'm losing the daylight as we speak. I made this video way too late in the day, but we're gonna go ahead and go out and see what we can get with this thing. So that should be a lot of fun. Now, what I've decided to focus on is this leaf right here. Uh, I thought it was kind of interesting, which is probably something I shouldn't even think about because, well, it's gonna be super close. We're not gonna see the whole thing. But let's check out what kind of shots we can get with this. Now, I should probably be using some sort of a tripod um, just because it's gonna make it a lot more stable because I do want that extra light. So I'm using a much slower frame rate. And it's really hard to tell where I'm in focus at, especially because it's me. I can never seem to hold the camera very steady. Okay, you know what? Um, I'm gonna go get a tripod. Okay, I got the tripod and I decided to put it up on my trampoline just so it's a little higher up, especially with the tripod, which I would always recommend with macro photography is using a tripod. It just, it, it, sorry about that. It just makes it so much easier. But let's see if we can position this without the sun killing us. Let's see if we can get a good shot. Let's try moving over here. So we have a little more light. It might have been the smarter thing to do in the first place, but oh well. And now the other thing I would really recommend is either using a remote shutter or setting a timer. Because you zoomed in so far, you really want to avoid that camera shake as much as possible. It's so hard to set this where I need it. And there you have it. A weird way to do macro photography. And yeah, it was this very leaf right here. 
Um, I'm kind of glad that even though it's November, fall isn't over per se. Uh, there's still leaves on the ground and says snow everywhere, just so I can take a picture of that one. However, I think I'm going to use this method once the snow really does come down. Like, there could be some really cool shots in there. But anyways, this method of doing macro photography, is it weird? Yes. Is it unconventional? Absolutely. Is it something you're never going to use? There's a good chance, but I think it's kind of cool. So I thought I'd make a video showing you guys exactly, <laughs> exactly how this method works. It's definitely bizarre. I'm not going to dispute that, but it is a whole lot of fun. So anyways, um, yeah, that's a weird random way that can be kind of a pain to focus and making sure you have two lenses that are the, the same size on the end with a adapter that's threaded on both sides to piece them together and might be more trouble than it's worth, but it's a whole lot of fun. So uh, I hope this video brought you some value. If it did, make sure to like it and subscribe to this channel. And I don't know when my next video will be coming out, I don't want to make any commitments because I am so busy that I always seem to let you guys down. But I will have a couple more videos before the end of the year. This I do promise you. So until then, keep creating. Cheers.